Hey, Sandra Griver here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to some more science fiction discussion. I wanted to bring to the table today this idea that you need your science in science fiction. Seems like a simple, pretty obvious idea. But the more short fiction that I've been reading over the months, the more I do see there are interesting ideas, there are interesting themes for a story, but the trajectory, the, the execution from the beginning to the end lacks, and it's because there's just not enough science explained. Now, this could be a physical science, you know, something material, um, or something, of course, like astronomy, or there could be something like social science, but something that involves in the narrative enough explanation where I'm like, oh, you got to point, you know, you got from point A to point B in a very wonderful way. Um, because I think point A at the start to point B is interesting, but I, I've come across a couple stories where I'm like, okay, this is interesting, but I don't know how you got there. And one of the stories in particular, this is by Frederick Pohl. Actually, forgive me, I just don't even remember the title off the top of my head, but it wasn't that great of a story to begin with. Um, had this very interesting concept where it's like, okay, we're starting with this protagonist. He's no nonsense. He's like this straight shot attorney. And then he's, uh, he's, he's sticking it to this one um, person, this one man who is performing illegal gambling activities. You know, I, I would say, I think it's gambling or maybe it was some sort of prediction system or something, but it was, it was illegal. And uh, this, this young man wanted to stick it to him. He's, he was like a private eye, I think. Um, and I can't really remember, uh, but he starts out that way. He starts out just no nonsense, just, you know, cutthroat. He's, he's doing everything by the books. And then by the end of the story, he goes insane and he starts obsessing over the, the very, uh, very much the illegal predictions activity that he was fighting against. Well, that's a very interesting trajectory. Um, and then I did know that something that caused him to go insane was this apparatus, this this machine of sorts, uh, working with some sort of uh, science involving air molecules and, and something about those air molecules were, were causing him to go, you know, be the opposite of who he was from the beginning. And the man that he was uh, uh, taking a task on this, he the man explained the apparatus in just a little bit of a, like a few sentences, maybe a paragraph saying, oh, you know, this is this is the case with such a scientific apparatus. Uh, something about air molecules and and the conversion of maybe the conduction of heat or something like that. And maybe I'm just dense, but I didn't really see the real science it, it, or or even the th theoretical science of okay, how does this guy who's just no nonsense by the books become this obsessive person performing the illegal activity he initially you know uh, fought to to stop. So it, it was a very interesting trajectory, and I got the, the basic understanding, like, okay, this, this machine caused him to go insane, but I didn't really understand the science behind it, and I really would have, because I think it was a short enough story where the, the impact could have been uh, pretty well done. And so that's where I was like, oh, I needed not to be spoon-fed as a reader, and I'm, I'm a... I'm a reader of the 2020s, and this fiction was the 1950s and 60s. So maybe, maybe people back then picked up on a few things that I just don't know culturally speaking. And, you know, maybe it had some sort of cultural relevance back then. Maybe the readers would have known how to kind of dissect those stories, and and I didn't. Or maybe I'm dense. Maybe I have a a, a comprehension issue. But you know, sometimes I, I I like to think of how to write a story where the, the reader can understand, clear cut, like, oh, I get where you came from, you know, this point to this point. Not to be spoon feeding your audience like, like they're adults, but at the same time, it's like you, you don't want to leave out a lot of things, especially involving science that is, is insinuated, but it's not really explained. And so that's, that's where I am with my reading this short fiction is thinking about, okay, you know, some science fiction really needs a little bit more science put in, you know, a little bit more of an explanation. I, I am, you know, you, you may have seen a previous video where I'm saying give science fiction a break, where there can be room for um, metaphysics, there can be room for um, speculative, you know, even slightly magical um, ideas for your science fiction 
short stories or or novels for that matter. So I'm I'm pretty lenient when it comes to oh okay, science fiction has this very large umbrella. You know, you can work with even a little mysticism, you know, something like space fantasy that we would even see in pop culture today like with Star Wars. Uh Star Wars isn't, it, Star Wars is not science fiction, but you know, uh basically I I'm very much like open. I'm very much flexible to to call certain things that involve metaphysics and and um something outside the physical science to be science fiction. Um Isaac Asimov, again, as I had said before, is a good example of that, where he has really good ideas, very scientific ideas, but he's more of the theory of something and then executing his plots in that respect. So I guess I would say wrapping up here is, okay, there, sometimes science fiction can be too much science, can be too much hard science, and it's over my head, and that's just not my preference. I prefer characters, plot, uh, an overall arc, maybe a three-act structure and st stuff like that. Or it's not enough science. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I, I get something happened here. But how did you get to this point? You know, I want something that is properly executed. Not necessarily being spoon-fed, but things need to be a little bit better explained. And so that's my experience with reading uh, Frederick Pohl so far. Uh, I do like a couple of his short fiction or one no one novella and then one uh, novelette. Um, but I would say I wish he kind of explained things a little bit more clearly. I have yet to read a few more of his short fiction pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to read one of his more famous novels uh, pretty soon, actually. Uh, maybe Professor Geek says this this particular novel of his is uh, very, very good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, just in closing, if you are writing science fiction, just do be sure that you're giving enough science. It doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be um, proven in our world. But enough theoretical science where it's like, oh, okay, from point A to point B, that makes sense. And it's, it's very properly executed. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you so much. And until I see you next, keep producing the art you love, the good art you love, and keep reading that good literature you love, and I will catch you later. Thanks.